Justice League issue 40, Robert Venditti writing with Doug Mankey on the art. So this is the start of a new run, which on Twitter, and we talked about this last week, Snyder said was set before his run. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to count the ways in which this book contradicts that statement. <laughs> oh boy, there's a lot. Uh, yeah. I, can, just before we actually get to you know, all the, 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 the minutia of when it might possibly be set, yeah. I just want to say, I enjoyed this book. I enjoyed this issue. I like this, and I'm not going to let the timeline ruin that, that enjoyment. I, no. I, th- I thought the, the the issue was fine. I thought it was a perfectly decent issue. I'm not necessarily in love with it. It's just kind if, of okay. If you put out of your mind that this is supposed to take place, if, if you just didn't see what Snyder had said and just read this, it still works. I mean, it'd be weird coming after last week's cliffhanger. If this was just, hey, this sure. is a Justice League issue one, you, you're reading this in you know five, yeah, ten yeah, years' yeah. time. Someone goes, right. hey, read this Justice League issue one. To start the story, right? I think this is perfectly good. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I think this puts the book back to kind of what it was when Hitch was writing it. Not necessarily in terms of the mm-hmm. actual quality, but just in terms of oh, it's just kind of a, a fun book that's not really important right now. It's just you know, it's just yeah. that fun romp of a team book. Yeah. Look, I can kill it for all of the timeline inconsistencies, but Vanity just brought Sodom Yacht back into my life. I can't be mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love that. So anyway, so, so here's the big things. Uh, some, uh, there was some I didn't even notice that I read on Twitter after the fact, but uh, the ones that stuck out to me that really stuck out is one, at one point when they're talking about things and like, oh, there's magic involved. Hey, Wonder Woman, what can we do about that? She says, oh, the Justice League Dark is busy right now. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Justice League Dark formed at the same time as Snyder's run started. Mm-hmm. It did, yes. because it, they spun out of No Justice when yeah. they needed... Yeah. I, I- I could concede, uh, you know, theoretically, mm-hmm. I could concede that the, you know, the Justice League that formed technically at the end of No Justice, and you know, and then you've got the very beginning of the Justice League, sure. and then and you know, you, you can kind of fit it in right S- there. Small window. Really There's a small window there, perhaps. Yes, there is, but I can theoretically do that. It's wonky, mm-hmm. but sure, okay. Um, so it gets worse. Here's the two, here's the two <laughs> big things. The, the two biggest things by far is Alfred being dead, which even even on its own there's a, a I think an unclear thing in the panels here where um I actually thought Alfred speaking to him in one panel was like an AI and because the very next page Superman mentions to someone else that oh ever since Alfred died Bruce has been, you know, on edge or whatever. And I was like, wait, what? And I actually went back and I was like, oh, I guess it's an AI. It was actually Venditti on Twitter that confirmed that that little panel was a flashback moment. And reading that again with that knowledge, because the next the next panel says uh, autopilot engage after, in the flashback panel, Batman said, hey, Alfred, can you take control of the jet? So I can kind of see it there now that you said it, but it's not, I don't think it's clear. I, I think it's a really murky... It wasn't clear. No. Nah. Because had, had, until you said I, Venditti went to Twitter, I didn't... I think... In with the knowledge, I think there there is actually some effective coloring that okay. Instead of all the red tint, it's got this green. Oh, uh, like okay, this is the and, past. I, and to be fair, I did notice the coloring change, but it wasn't clear enough to really tell me what was what it was. Yeah, I could have done with something extra. But I, I with the knowledge, I go okay. I see what this is doing, but I am definitely knocking half the point. Just yeah, for that. but it was a, it was yeah. a weird moment. Uh, but so we have that. So Alpha's dead. So this takes place after the end, or at least towards the end, of City of Bane, right? I mean, probably after City of Bane, otherwise Batman ain't doing this. Also, in between, what other major thing that just happened? Well, we also have Superman's identity has been revealed. Yeah. And that's already right. happened. And here's the problem, is that these things, especially the, the death of death of Alfred, could, unidentifiably happened after the Doom Sigil appeared in the sky, right? Correct me right. if I'm wrong here. Right. Yeah. Did we see the Doom happened? Signal in, in the regular Batman book? In that, I claim, think we did. It was, uh, it was the the Garrods part, yeah, that I got really upset about because it focused on on Bullock, and that was it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So so that happened after the Doom Sigil was in the sky. Um, I don't know if it ever appeared in the Superman book, but I mean, even that was just that just happened. That literally just happened. Um, right. So. Like and then there's a couple of other little things like uh, uh, I I don't know the exact timeline here because you guys read core and I didn't but you know John taking you know dropping down as the leader of the Green Lantern Corps like how, where that fits in the timeline. Uh, that was a while ago, admittedly. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I, I don't was, know. That was before Justice League started. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. That's when Venditti was still writing Hell and Bells. Yeah. But there's uh some weird. I mean, and the problem is, is that even if you take away the fact that it's supposed to be set before Snyder's run, which it, it totally isn't, because it can't be set after. There's no way it makes sense it's to be set, be set after. Dur- it's got to be set during. 
I and guess, but small moments the, in between <laughs> their that, big grand adventures. That's, that's the problem, though, is that the book was so se- sequential and having this big ongoing crisis no. level threat the entire time that there is no time for it to slot in. No, there's not, and I am just going to ignore it and but, do that thing. I'm going to just go, Joe. You know what? I don't care. But, fair, but the, continuity but, be damned. I'm going to just read the book. But the final point I need to make here is that not only can it can it not be set before Snyder's run because of when the Doom Sigil has appeared in the sky in these other stories that they're referencing, it has to be like during the last like little bit of it. <laughs> it has yeah. to be during when yeah. everything's going on. Which already didn't make sense with all the single books anyway while this was happening in Justice League. But now it's even worse. Now it's like there's a second Justice League thing happening during all this. Honestly, I'm over it already. Like I'm just like, okay, fine. Just I'm just yeah. It doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't fit. Whatever. Because More. I want to talk about the story. Oh yeah, where... sure. My my, my problem yeah. here isn't isn't the accepting of it. My problem is then why even try and say anything about it? Why even try and they knew- because they knew people were going to say where this is going to fit in, so Snyder tried to get ahead of it and was wrong. Matt, I, I, I think it's worth noting that Snyder said that he may have been mistaken, he may not have known right. the exact things. Uh, Do you know what pisses me off? No official word. What pisses me off about this isn't the fact that, the, that there's little... Because I, I can buy why there's little things that don't line up when there's all these different writers doing different things. My problem is, is that by forcing all the other books to have all these tie-in things, they put themselves in this corner. It was their own stupidity editorially that created this problem, and that's why I'm not going to forgive them for it, because they created this intentionally. Do you know why I'm going to forgive them for it? Because it just why? doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm, if, if, if in a couple of years' time, when I want to reread a Justice League story, assuming this ends up being a good, you know, really fun Justice League story, I'm going, hey, I'm going to reread that. I'm not going to give a shit what's happening. Well, no, I'm, I'm not saying specifically for this this particular but I'm just speaking in a large world sense. The reason why we have such a messy timeline right now is because they did this to themselves. I'll, I'll and it tell was, you why it doesn't matter. It was so have avoidable. A, a genuine story reason why it doesn't matter. Uh, we're we're, we're going to fix it all with hypertime 5G nonsense in, in a few months. <laughs> so screw it. Do whatever you want. Uh, no, sure. hold themselves to a better standard than that. Like, you can wave it all away if you want, but, like, I'm not, like, I- I'll get past it and talk about the story in a second, but I just think that they did this to themselves, they they made their own bed, and I'm going to pull them off for it. I'm not letting them away with it. They, no. They, just, they, they, they know they're wiping it all away, in a, in, like, within five, six months anyway. They're like, yeah. ah, screw it, just which, do whatever. Which is care. fine. It doesn't matter anymore. Which I'm still going to call them out for it, because, no, you should never say it doesn't matter anymore. If you do that, you failed as, a, as an editor, as a writer. It do- no, it doesn't matter anymore as you effectively being lazy, and I'm not Honestly, accepting it. I, I think continuity just doesn't matter this much. It's nice when it lines up. It is. It's great. It's fun when things line up. Well, but listen, no, but listen, up, listen the story's good. I don't care. Listen to what I'm saying. I don't mind continuity not lining up. This is creating more continuity problems out of just sheer negligence uh, than there needs to be. This is not natural continuity problems. We've always had natural continuity problems. This has gone out of their way to make everything ten times worse. Yeah, but it's fun to read. I'm not accepting this hand waving. Connor's just doing this to annoy me and to, to fight you. Because I, I, I don't. He is. Because I, I just. You can be mad about it and that's fine, but at a certain point you have to move on and just. Like, okay, I, they messed up. I'm on like to move on, but Con- Connor insists in following up everything I say with, I just don't care. And that's fine, you can not care, but I'm not letting them away with it. They fucked up, and I'm sticking to that. Alright. They chose to do this, yeah. they messed up, and we're having to deal yeah. with it because so, of that. So, Sodom Yacht crashes on Earth, and even even John's like, man, where have you been? Also, also actually, why is the Flash a dick in this issue? Why is he out of character? I don't know. Uh, I, to be fair, I felt that's something we're gonna deal okay. with. He's having a he's having a bit of a crisis of, of who he is right now in this book. Right. Like, yeah, because because he, he he gives Wonder Woman some shit when she calls him out yeah. when he's he hesitated during the film. And uh, actually, yeah. that's why that's why I'm only only lukewarm in this issue. The first chunk of it, the entire fight they have with Yat at the start, feels that like it's just there because they wanted to have a big fight. And afterwards, we're yeah. like, because he's basically, like, oh, I didn't realize it was you guys. We'll just move on now. I'm like. So that fight was just there so you could have a fight with everyone, you know, at the start of the issue. Yeah. There, there was no yeah, purpose for it, story-wise. And you have to establish... Well, you have to establish what Daxamites can do for people that don't know, is that they're effectively Kryptonians, um, but with a different weakness. There's so a better way of doing it. It just it felt so forced to me. It felt so forced yeah. just so they could have a big fight with everyone at the start. So, it wasn't even so, a big fight. It was like three pages. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, a big fight in that we get to see everyone whip out a power. So you know, it shows the Flash doing something. It shows the Wonder Woman doing something. It shows everyone doing something. And it just it felt so forced to me because they they had to like have this moment at the start. And and, and the way they resolved it, it's like, oh, I didn't realize it was you guys. I was a bit this, out of it. Joe, you know, the amount of times we say that comics should be accessible for new people. This is Baby's first Justice League. It's like here you go. You don't know Justice League. First five pages. This is who they all are. What they can do. Baby's first justice. Baby's first. Like, yeah. which is fight. I'm not saying the the tactic of doing this, but just give them someone else to fight. The way he just said, "Oh, I was out of it," so, so now we're fine. It just moved on. It just annoyed me. Oh man, you're taking my Sabanya away. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. So stoked. I'm sorry. But... I got to that. I got to that point, and then the the stuff that he drops about how. There's been, you know, he, he left the Green Lantern Corps, became a politician on Daxum, and that he leads the isolationist party. And John's like, well, that's that's weird. He's like, oh, no, I do that for our own good because Daxamite people are kind of suck. <laughs> um, kind of old dicks. <laughs> yeah, and so it's, it's good that we keep it on Daxum because – and then they explained that they share <clears throat> a common ancestor with the Kryptonians, and, and that's, you know, led to – yeah. The Eradicator coming to Daxum, yeah. stirring up a certain group of the, the, yeah, Daxamites. The premise of this basically is that Eradicator, because there's no Kryptonians left for him to kind of like work with, he's went to Daxum and created Daxum super soldiers, which he's built right. an army of, and he's coming to Earth with these... Right. And that's what they had the cliffhanger is at the end, it's them arriving right. on Earth. Um, but basically, you know, in discussing this, they're like, okay, what other weaknesses do you have, uh, Clark? He's like, well, magic's usually a bit of a bitch. Because they're like, what do you hate? He's like, I try not to hate things. Yeah. I just right. I really they mentioned, don't like magic. Because they mentioned that these Daxum super soldiers have basically taken some treatment to make kryptonite un- they've, unaffect they've, them. They've bred it out of yeah. them genetically. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and that's, and that's fine because Daxamites uh, are they're, they're vulnerable to lead. And that's yeah. what led to Monel going to the 31st century. But with Sada Miat is, I forget what they did, but the Green Lantern ring adjusted to the to to the elements for him. So like once he had the ring on, it like he could it not. Out. Right, it couldn't. You know, he could be on Earth and deal with the the elements and stuff. So here with these super soldiers, they've been bred it out. So it's essentially an army of Superman with no weakness uh, that we know of, which. That justifies the Justice League story, if you ask me. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I have no problem with the core plot. The core plot being Eradicator's got an army of Daxamites that he's sort of turned into his own, like you know, master race mm-hmm. of Kryptonians, essentially, uh, and he's going to come to take over Earth. Like, I am fine mm-hmm. with that. I think I don't like the issue that much, though, because, like I say, the opening felt forced to me, and um, I actually don't think Mankey's art here is up to his usual standard. I, I felt yeah, a bit, it, was, it was fine. I felt a bit it wonky. was giving me uh, old Green Lantern vibes. So again. It, that tickles my nostalgia bone, yeah. so I'm okay with it. And then there's the weird. That it's, it's not his best work, but yeah. I think it's no. solid. There's no, there's nothing there that I would point out and say, "Oh, that looks bad." And then there's the weird oh, Alfred yeah. moment as well. So I mean, my, I mean, even though I like kind of what the overall plot is, I, I kind of left this issue feeling very, like, I don't know, like Vendetta for me. Outside of one or two issues of Freedom Fighters, which I've tried. Uh, I've always felt kind of, you know, at best lukewarm on, and I, this issue for me kind of continued that trend where I, I left it just kind of being like, it was okay. Um, so I, yeah. I, I, I'm not super enthused about where, you know, the, the quality of this for me going forward. I mean, I'm going to keep reading it for now and see what it's like, but, um... I, uh, personally, I liked it a lot. I will agree the, the flashback thing was weird. Uh, yeah, that, that could much. have been much clearer. I'm, I'm docking half a point for that one panel alone, um, because that was just not well handled. Um. Things like you know the the opening, I, I like the okay. Well, just a little introduction. And then oh, it, it's it's someone we know. This is cool. Um, the thing with the the, the flash. Um, while you say oh he was being a dick, I think he was being defensive. I think there's a difference. Diana's like hey yo, know, something's wrong, and and he doesn't want yeah, to admit well, it. And that was less a critique and more just an observation. Uh, that I wasn't really docking it for that. Yeah, I'm I'm more intrigued to see what we're doing with that because uh, obviously something's going on in his head. Um, because, you know, she, he's like, oh, I hesitate. She's like, you don't hesitate. And he's like, well, you know, shut up. Uh, he, he doesn't want to deal with it yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I hate to be the downer, but I'm, I'm very lukewarm on this issue. Um, oh, yeah. that, for me, this is just kind of like further proof of what I always thought of Vendetti, to be honest. Uh, oh, man. And we got, we got Xanadu coming in? Uh, yeah, I love yeah. seeing Xanadu. Yeah, Batman goes to see Xanadu and gets a little wrapped up, <laughs> as it were. Which, 
but that's how he kicked off his Hawkman too, so I'm okay with this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have any particular, you know, liking of Xanadu. I don't really care that she's here, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm honest. I, it's, it's, no, I mean, kept away. Like, I don't like, oh, Xanadu, amazing. Like, yeah. oh, it's always nice to see it. She doesn't pop I, often enough. I've never wanted a Xanadu solo series, but when she pops up as a supporting character mm. for whatever mystical abilities you are going to acquire, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know where Hot Girl was in all in all of this, but she seemed to be missing just out of the the, yep. the roster. Um, but it is the roster for Snyder's Justice League. Uh, just aside the fact that she's not there because John's already there. Oh, I guess Martian Manhunter wasn't really there yet either. He's he's not in this book. Uh, uh, no. I wonder what's going on there. Uh, I, I, maybe that's one of those things where they're trying to pretend it's before Snyder's uh, run. Uh, they really join like at the start of that. That's true. So, which, I mean, I guess that confirms that it's not just uh, Snyder saying it. That the book technically is trying to pretend that it's set then, but in doing so, it's saying that it's set after all these other things that came much later, which would be fine, except the Doom Sigil was in all those bloody books. Anyway. Yeah. Tommy wimey <sighs> I just, like... I'm not asking for everything to be perfect. Hyper time, bro. I don't have to explain shit. I'm not asking for things to be perfect, just to not make it this stupidly, like wrong because <laughs> it is it's just it's so far off the mark anyway matt what, what are you giving justice league for it's a 7.5 connor yeah 7.5 for me as well i got a six that was six i clearly had more problems with some of the things i i just hated how they threw oh i i was kind of out of it oh that's not sorry sorry for fighting i hated that i hated that explanation it bugged the shit out of me and then all the continuity problems that weird alfred flashback Art not being amazing, just being okay. So, 6 out of 10. Uh, but I do like the Eradicator plot, uh, you know, for what it is.